Hey, Nick Tarasio here with Paul Corkery of GE Aviation. And Paul, today I'd love to talk a little bit about the new turboprop that, that you guys have just released, or, or you're working on releasing, is that right? That's right. We're thrilled to be on the new Denali with this engine. This engine brings a lot of different technologies to the marketplace, Nick. First and foremost, it gives you 10% better horsepower at altitude, 15-plus uh, percent better fuel burn, and the service interval is 33% longer than existing engines in this market. Another thing that we're bringing in is a FEDA controller as well that helps enable simplified cockpit and do a digital twin. Incredible. So what, what actually drove GE stepping into a turboprop now? I mean, the PT-6 has been around forever. What, what prompted saying, hey, this is where we need to be focusing our energy today? First of all, the engines in this market are great. Uh, we just felt it was time for a, a step change, game changing technology. We've done a lot of this technology before in other markets, but we wanted to harvest that and bring it into this market to make, bring a step function change in terms of engine performance and pilot simplification. Got it. So are you focused now mostly on the light turboprops, or do you, do you see larger applications where this is going to end up in the commercial commuter type? Oh, we're laser focused on our customer, our launch customer. We have to earn our way into this market, so we want to make sure that comes out right. Of course, we see some runway here for additional applications. We've had a lot of inquiries, but we're laser focused on delivering the performance to our customer. What's been the biggest challenge in getting this thing out there? You know, the biggest challenge is getting the capable engineers, you're right. Right now we have 400 plus engineers working on this program in, in four different countries. Being able to go out and get that capability quickly and deliver in a short cycle engine development. This is probably 18 months shorter than our typical engine development. Seeing, seeing what's going on here at Oshkosh, we're noticing there's some interesting trends, right? We've seen, and, and maybe even going back 10 years, Ed Williams said, look, we think everything's going to be small jet engines uh, and, and not turboprops. Then you see here, everyone's talking about drones and the future of autonomous. Where does GE see that, that the market's going to go? Because clearly you guys are investing in the future of turboprops. You see that that's going to be around a while. Yeah, and we, we see the market continue to grow in turboprops. That's why we're making a huge investment into this marketplace. We think this game-changing performance will help that, make it more attractive to the end users of this. It's also the enabling technology, the FADIC, which is a full authority digital engine control. It reduces the complexity on the pilot, but it also sets us up for analytics and digital twins and things where we can look into that engine in ways that you couldn't look into a past. So we believe this market's going to continue to grow. We believe we can bring the technology into this market to help it grow. Excellent. And what, are you, what are you most excited about yourself as you talk about where the, the, the engine technology is moving? I think the most excitement I see is one is additive, right? This is, uh, we're bringing 800 plus parts down to 12 parts. And when you said additive, do you mean the, it's like 3D metal printing essentially? Yeah, actually additive is 3D and you can see some of the parts behind us here. So can we actually check out one of these additive parts? Of course, Nick. We got a few back here, so let's go check it out. All right, cool. Thanks. All right, so what's this here exactly? Yeah, so as I'm mentioning, Nick, that we took 800 plus parts, taking it down to 12. This is one of the 12 parts, so this would be 30 plus parts taken into one. And this was actually 3D printed as you see it. And this is the exhaust case on the engine. So we do a design trade on traditional manufacturing versus what we want to 3D print, Nick. So if you look at this, you see it's complex, it's concave, so we can print this over about a 10 day period of time. Some other examples of it is this is the, the inlet frame, and you can see the inlet frame, the in, how intricate it is. Wow. And again, you can, you're not wasting material. You can reduce design cycle because if you make a change to the design, it's a software change downloading to the machine instead of retooling. We think this is where the technology is going to go. This is where it's going to be. And so we're really excited to be able to show you this. We're building our first engine, which I mentioned before, is going to fire at the end of the year. And this will be the first time an engine has this much additive technology into it. Amazing. Well, this is really beautiful yeah. stuff. And it's, I'm really curious to see what other applications you guys figure out with additive. It sounds like it's going to be a complete context changer. Stay tuned. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks a lot for watching and thanks to Aviation Week for working with us on this content. Please do go check out aviationweek.com slash Oshkosh for all the updates and highlights. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. Our channel is Take Off with Nick and thanks again for watching.